welcome Horizon community. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rob Villiani and we have Alberto Garofolo. Thank you, Rob. And uh, we are doing another instructional video talking about the next evolution of our technology and what I think is one of the most important uh, evolutions for us as a project and I think very important for the industry as a whole. So what we're going to talk about today is the Horizon sidechain model that we have the inventor of, uh, Alberto, here today. And he'll go into quite a bit of technical detail. Um, we'll giving you uh, an overview of the system. Uh, and really, what, what I want to convey is how important this is for us. Because we are doing a lot of things as an industry, uh, you know, trying to build out this blockchain technology and trying to think about how we can add real world value into these systems. Because we have to do a much better job than just creating technology for the sake of technology. What we need to do next is bridge that real world gap and actually start thinking about how will this be the next internet, say technology uh, boom, or uh, not really a boom per se, but really how do we do kind of a similar uh, expansion of value for real world applications. And in our case, the, the model that we're gonna see here today is a really elegant way of doing this massive scalability into real world use cases in a way that's tractable, extremely secure, modular, right, and, and done in a way where uh, the main chain can remain kind of minimalistic uh, and in that sense be very fast and very secure and we can do a lot of experimentation and a lot of different business use cases on dedicated side chains. So I'm really excited to, you know, have this conversation with Alberto and have him go into this detail to introduce this to you guys. We have a white paper uh, that we're going to be releasing on the market so that you can go into the, the details, you can look at the mathematical proofs to see the validity of this model uh, and see that it is, it is done in a very academically rigorous way, which I think is great to combine the science and academic rigor with the engineering um, innovations here in a way that I think creates a much more robust system. So please, Alberto, you know, have at it and explain to the, you know, our community here the innovations that we're, we're going to bring to the market. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons we started thinking about sidechain was the, um, uh, we have the need to introduce the treasury system. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we, the first thing we thought was to uh, implement the treasury system inside main chain. Right. Yeah, it seems the most, uh, let me say, easy way to do it. Right, but it's a complex modification to the core protocol. Exactly. Yeah. And then importantly, as you were mentioning earlier, we have a lot of other things that we want to bring out here, a lot of other applications, and do we want them all to be written into our main chain protocol? Exactly. So, uh, we want we wanted to make other applications, okay, that uh, communicate with our blockchain and exchange uh, our uh, information with our main chain. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, we had the treasury that we had to implement. So, um, what we were thinking is to make a more general uh, view of the problem, okay, and uh, try to find a more general solution uh, yes. for it. So, what is the common point of these use cases? Mm. Let us call them funds. Yeah. They are like funds because, uh, okay, let's start with the treasury. The right. treasury is a fund that uh, collect money and collect some data that can be, for example, in our case, uh, proposal, mm -hmm. uh, votes, and all the stuff that is uh, required to, uh, let me say, fund projects. Right. And after redistribute the funds with, with these rules and right. with this data, okay? And we wanted to have these um, data uh, publicly auditable, so on a blockchain. Of I course, mean. yeah. No, of course, I mean, and this is such an important use case for us as a project, and this is part of the initial vision was, we want to be truly decentralized because we want to be an egalitarian system that maintains our core values, and we also want to be censorship resistant to the point where you don't have to rely on us to determine forever how to best allocate resources. We want to democratize this process, and this is just a classic, perfect, first use case for sidechains. Yeah, and, and so uh, 
here the need of having also the treasury decentralized. Okay? Yes, exactly. So, okay, we are seeing it as a fund, as a fund that have to be run in a decentralized way. Yep. Okay, and they have to communicate with the main chain. So to exchange coins mm -hmm. with with their rules. Applications are exactly the same thing. They are okay. We can make other examples. For example, an insurance. Right, like an insurance company. Exactly, yeah. like an insurance company could be very analogous to the treasury fund in the sense that you have a resource pool into which beneficiaries are paying premiums, right? And you have some logic that determines what is a qualifying event to which you can then disperse the premiums to individuals. But we want to do everything in as decentralized a fashion as possible with the lightest footprint technologically and the lowest burden on the main chain. Yeah, and so uh, <laughs> we can even make a, a decentralized interest. Right. Open source. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where you can. This is not a problem. That's that we're doing. This, but <laughs> no. just, just an example that yeah. I think is analogous, uh, like a real world use case that's analogous to the treasury system. Because really, the the, the common theme that you'll see for us uh, as a project is we don't want to just experiment with blockchain technology for the sake of blockchain technology. Right. We're always thinking about what are these real world uh, use cases that we could bring in to enhance the value of our network. Yeah. And so, just to summarize, yeah. funds. Money goes, comes in mm -hmm. and gets redistributed with its own logic and yep. then goes back to the main chain. Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay. Sounds so simple, Alberto, but you have some, <laughs> some complex stuff here. We have some equation <laughs> that, yeah. that kind of dictates the rules here because the rules themselves um, are they're, they're elegant, um, but there, there is some complex logic here to think of. So one of the main goals was to not increase the complexity of the main chain rules. Okay? Right. So, the, the big problem here is to uh, let the main chain not know anything about the rules uh, of the side chains, yeah. okay? But at the same time, agree on the transfer that comes from the, the side chain. So, right. Because it's, uh, in, in this kind of system, it's very easy to think how, uh, the main chain can transfer funds to the side chain, right? But it's more difficult to find a decentralized way to accept funds right. from the side chain without knowing their rules. Exactly. And yeah. So we get some rules here, some some you know elegant mathematics, things like this that kind of limit the ability of you know transferring um, you know potentially more funds out, yeah. right? You. You never want to have the ability for an adverse actor or a malicious actor to ever kind of subvert a system. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we introduce also the concept of fraud. Yes. Okay. Yes. So and uh, uh, a system that deterministically mm -hmm. uh, detects frauds. Yeah. And so make them not profitable. But okay. Yeah. Let's so, start from. Yeah. The, so why don't we start from the beginning? Exactly. From the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> not from the end. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, first consideration. Uh, we want to run many side chains in parallel, mm -hmm. and everyone can start its, its own side chain. Right. Which is so important from the, the democratic aspect of what we're trying to yeah. do. We, we don't ever want to create a system where we endow like an early stakeholder with advantages into perpetuity forever. Right. Like imagine if we only created one possible side chain. And there's only one way to do it, and there's some set of stakeholders that kind of, you know, create and then you capture the side chain for themselves. But what I love about your model is that you make it generalizable, so that you have just a common protocol that now any potential side chain operator can integrate into their side chain and join our network. Yes, and in a decentralized way. Yeah. So uh, we do not have uh, an entity yeah. that's control everything and then say, okay, it's, that's good and that's not good. Right. Never someone that could stand in the way and grant someone permission or re, you know, deny them access. Yeah. That's critical. Yeah. But that's, that complicates the model. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but that, and that's why I, I think it's, it's such a, an elegant model because it solves this problem in a very minimalistic fashion. Yeah. Okay. So. Parallel side chains, yeah. parallel applications, okay? And 
every sidechain with its own rule. Yeah. Okay. So first, uh, how transfer are made from main chain to side chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's say that if you want to transfer mm -hmm. funds from the main chain to the side chain, you are somehow burning yeah. such coins in the main chain and creating them in the side chain. Right. And so, and you will um, give a proof of the ownership of such coins to use them in the side chain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and this is what I believe you call a forward transfer. Yes. Right. Exactly. And okay, after such transfer, you will be able to let me say use these coins for the specific purpose of the side chain. Right. If we talk about the treasury, mainly such uh, coins will come from the Coinbase, right? Because the treasury uh, will have the, the transfer from 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 the Coinbase, right. and uh, um, instead, uh, other kind of side chain will have, for example, transfer from the user that want to use right. that side chain. Yeah, and just for some some uh, viewers who might not understand, a Coinbase transaction is kind of a an initial block reward. So every block that's mined, there's um, you know, a block in there, or a transaction that we call a Coinbase transaction. And what we do in the Horizon Network right now is we actually have a diversion um, of, of the, the Coinbase transaction where part goes to miners, 70%, 10% goes to you know, qualifying secure node operators, 10% to super node operators, and 10% to a treasury fund. So what Alberto is talking about is the, you know, a diversion of the, the co or commitment of the Coinbase transactions from you know, the block rewards that we currently have to its own dedicated side chain. Yeah. And so money is recreated on the side chain. Okay. Yeah. Keeps uh, talking about the treasury. Uh, we will have um, other data collected from the treasury that can be votes, yeah. proposal of projects, and, and so on. And after when uh, it's payment epoch, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, all, su all such data is collected, yeah. and uh, um, with the specific logic of the treasury, yeah. uh, for example, a proposal win, and so right. have to be funded, right. okay? So uh, the, the coins that were recreated on the, on the side chain yeah. will have to be redistributed to the uh, owner of the proposal. Right, exactly. On the main chain. On the main chain. Right. Yes. Okay. So we were talking about payment epoch. Okay. Right. So the treasury collected all the data. Okay. Yep. Uh, and uh, with its own logic, have to redistribute the funds. Right. And it creates uh, a backward transfer from. Yep the side chain to the main chain. And this is the key of the protocol that you've yes. created here, is how we deal with the backward transfers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And somehow, the main chain have to uh, validate mm -hmm. such, mm -hmm. um, such transfer. So what's the process? Like, th there must be certain nodes right, that, that are, exist on the main chain that can actually digest this data and determine whether or not it's, it's um, true. Yeah, actually, I mean, in, on the main chain, we have miners. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, and our nodes. Exactly. That's, the problem is that our nodes uh, do not know anything about the rules that were distributed the funds on the side chain. Right. Okay. So, and we do not want no, them no. to know it. That would be way too complex, way too fast. Yeah. Uh, as this ecosystem were to expand with many side chains. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, we introduced a concept of certifiers mm -hmm. that uh, are not someone that we trust more than others. So we right. keep the system decentralized. Right, and this uh, is the key, is we don't have yeah. a set of, you know, quote, trusted certifiers. Absolutely. Yeah, because Absolutely. there are a lot of other models out there uh, on the market that propose certain kind of trustworthy agents or certifiers. Exactly, but um, it's a, a centralized. System. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, which could then always be subverted. Yes. So I think the, the key here is to think about how do you design a protocol with proper economics and engineering in place that just makes subverting the system uh, not worth it.
Exactly. So uh, everyone can be a certifier. Yeah. So if you want, you can run a sidechain node, a specific sidechain node, and yeah. become a certifier. Yeah. Okay. Why would you do this? Oh, because you're rewarded. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, Usually like good, it works in this way. Yeah, like a good blockchain ecosystem, we always design the incentives to yes. do the right thing. Yes, exactly. Yeah, to participate. Yes, and to protect the network. Yes, yes. So, uh, so the system uh, rely on this set of certifiers that mm -hmm. is distributed. Okay. Yep. So, how it works? As we told before, forward transfer goes to the to the side chain. Yeah. Okay. And after there is, let us call it a payment epoch, yep. where all the backward mm -hmm. transfer mm -hmm. are collected. Yep. And somehow are certified by a set of certifiers. Right. Okay. So you to be a certifier you have to lock some coins. Yes. Okay? So for example, uh, let us say that you have to lock 100 coins. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And from that point, you are going to be eligible as a possible certifier. Yep. Okay. This lock is performed on main chain. Yes. Okay. So main chain knows that you locked some coins to become a certifier yep. for that specific side chain. Yep. Okay. And you cannot use such coins until you unlock them. Right. Okay. After what happens? Um, also the side chain will know that you are a possible certifier. Okay. okay. Why? Because our sidechain uh, will monitor main chain mm -hmm. and will keep track of transactions, let me, let me say, sure. that are sidechain related. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So the sidechain will keep track of these sidechain related uh, uh, transactions and include them in the sidechain mm -hmm. blocks. And your lock is a sort of sidechain related transaction. Right. Okay. So everyone in the sidechain now knows that you're a possible certifier. Mm -hmm. And also the main chain. Yep. Okay. So what happens? Logic for mm, collecting the data, uh, redistributing funds, and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's payment epoch. Mm -hmm. Okay. A set of certifier is selected from right. the possible so there's a randomization process? Yeah, it's it's there is a randomization process. selects a random set of certifiers? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Uh, maybe we do not go to much in details about this, but yeah. there is a... But it's a pretty cool randomization process. Yes, and absolutely. You can read that in the white paper. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, a, yes. it's an important part. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So a set of certifier are going to sign a certificate mm -hmm. that... Uh, include the backward transfer that meet the consensus rules right. for that specific session with that in that specific payment type. Right. So, for example, uh, pay uh, the coins to the project owner that right. won, let me say the... Right. Okay. So, a certifier yeah. are going to sign such certificate and such certificate is going to be okay for sure included in the sidechain block but yep. also submitted to the main chain block yes by the certifiers by the certifiers right. main chain uh, you remember knows who is and a, a possible certifier. Right. Okay. And know exactly the rules that are used to select the set of certifiers. Right. So knows who is entitled to sign the certificate yeah. at a specific payment epoch. Yes. Okay. So a miner, a node, <laughs> I would say, in the main chain can verify mm -hmm. that the certificate is signed by the correct set of certifiers. Right. 
But, and here is the trick part. The nodes in the main chain can only verify if the certificate has been signed by the right set of certifiers. Right, that's the only logic that yeah. is really maintained on the main chain. Yes, yeah. exactly. But uh, n nodes that do not know if the payment signed by that set of certifier meet the sidechain criteria. Right. Okay? So, they just accept it. Mm -hmm. So, how we guarantee that this set of certifier, uh, let me say, um, um, signed a correct right. backward transfer? Right. We cannot guarantee it. Right. But, what we do, we, a certifier that join a certificate will not be, we will not be able to uh, unlock their coins for a certain amount of time, okay? Right, so it's basically like a fraud window. Yes, right? yeah. because what's, what happens in this fraud window? Fraud report detection window. Yes, yes. I would call it. Not to commit fraud, right? No. To, to, detect, <laughs> to detect and it. deal with the fraud. Exactly. exactly. So, also, if you had the possibility to have the 51% mm -hmm. of the certifier that were right. uh, eligible to sign the certificate in a right. specific epoch, you still not have the possibility to. Uh, unlock your uh, coins. Right. The, the main chain node will be able to verify if a certificate is signed by the right set of certifiers, mm -hmm. but they are not able to understand if the uh, backward transfer signed by the certifiers meet the sidechain criteria. Right. So, uh, what can happen? That the majority of the set of certifiers are malicious, okay, and sign in the main chain a uh, backward transfer that right. doesn't meet uh, the sidechain criteria. Yeah. Okay. So here we have a valid certificate. Yep. With this, with valid uh, backward transfer. Mm -hmm. But here, um, an invalid, a fraudulent. Okay. Uh, certificate has been signed yeah okay and main chain cannot do anything right because they do not know so initially it just accepts yes this yes okay okay but and here comes the the tricky part after you join a certificate as a certifier mm -hmm. you will not able will not be able to uh, unlock your coins for end payment epochs. Right. Let us call these end payment epochs as a fraud detection uh, like window. A window. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so the, after this certifier has uh, this cert certificate has been <laughs> included in the block mm -hmm. in the main chain is synced back as all the other yeah. sidechain uh, related uh, uh, transaction is synced back to the sidechain. Yeah. Okay. So every sidechain node will be aware of a uh, fraudulent certificate. Right. Okay. So the next payment epoch, mm -hmm. the next set of certifier, yeah. if they detected a fraudulent certificate, mm -hmm will file a fraud report and will right. sign a fraud report. And this fraud, fraud report will be included in the next certificate. Right, okay. And it's important to note though that this uh, next group of certifiers, th this, this next subset, is completely independent of the first set yes, of certifiers. You cannot There's no overlap. Yes. Once you've been committed to you know, one, one uh, set of certifiers, you cannot sign other other certificates for this n n n epic yeah. window. Correct. Okay. Exactly. And yeah. this is the important part. Yes. So, um, 
In such a way, the main chain will be informed that you uh, perform a fraud, yep. okay, or better, the, the majority of certifiers perform a fraud on the right. previous certificate. So it will um, not allow you to take back your locket coins. Mm -hmm. So and so, if we um, set uh, the amount you can sign mm -hmm. re in relation to the locket coins, right. we can make the system not profitable for uh, a malicious user, a malicious certifier to perform a fraud. Right, and that's exactly where this kind of boundary equation comes in is that the sum of all backward transfers can never be greater than the max of the max amount that certifiers have committed. Yes, because otherwise uh, it can be, well, let me say, uh, it can be profitable to right. perform a fraud. So, right. also in the unlucky event uh, of yeah. a majority of certifiers uh, being selected randomly yeah. uh, on a specific payment epoch, yeah. uh, and it, so they can take control of that specific uh, yeah. certificate, in any case, they, in the worst, uh, in the worst case, they can only sign a certificate that uh, whose amount uh, is lower than their stake. Right, exactly, which just makes it economically unprofitable. And I love that you guys have run simulations where you could look at adjusting that, that number N for this kind of fraud detection window to make it sufficiently large so that we can drive the, the likelihood of this type of event, uh, you know, sufficiently low to a point where it's just unreasonably low. Yes, absolutely. And the number demonstrated that also with a, a very high number of malicious certifiers, yeah. after three epochs or four epochs, you, will, you yeah. will be able to guarantee a very, very high security. Let me right. say, uh, almost, I would say, unfeasible to perform. Right, right, yeah. Without being punished. Right, yeah, Inf infinitesimally small. And these are, again, always stochastic events where why would you mount this type of attack if you have skin in the game or the stake that's committed, that if you fail in this attack, you lose your stake. Yeah, committed. So it's it just doesn't seem like a good economic situation to do it, and that's always what we're trying to build into these types of systems. Exactly. And so uh, this is, let me say, il, uh, the the, the uh, big picture about the fraud detection yeah. uh, rep uh, report system. Yeah. yeah, no, it's great, and I love the the beauty here is in the backward transfer protocol. And that's, but the, the economics are also really important. So uh, let's walk through a, a quick example where, say, I'm I'm a you know a real estate business or that insurance business that we were talking about, yeah. and I want to launch a, a Horizon sidechain. Yeah. So I, I know that I'm going to have some amount of economic activity in my business. Say, yeah. like I, I know that over some window, I'm going to have about a thousand Zen worth of economic activity. So I would go and I would commit, say, or or burn a thousand Zen. Right on the main chain. How, how would that process work? Oh, I mean, um, you can start your own side chain yeah. by submitting. Let me see. Let us call it Genesis transaction. Okay. Right. It, it, it's not strictly related to coins. It's right. just declaring some parameters that right. are related to the, the side initi chain. It's like initializing transactions. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Consider that uh, also you have to incentivize nodes to run your sidechain because right. everything here is right. totally decentralized. Right. So uh, You can't force anyone to do anything. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, um, lock forgers, certifiers uh, are the, uh, the one that keep the, 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 the sidechain uh, mm -hmm running and so right. they have to be uh, for sure rewarded and yep. these are part of the rules of the side chain yep. and that's, that's it yeah so um, what uh, what you can do after having created such um, genesis uh, declaration let us yeah. call it on the side chain for sure 
you can start moving funds of this on on this side chain right and these when you were moving funds towards the side chain mm -hmm. you are somehow burning coins in the side chain but they are recreated uh, sorry burning coins in the main, on the chain. main chain right and then recreating them on the side chain yeah okay and why this because the main chain will keep the balance of each side chain right why because we do not uh, want to have the risk to recreate more coins that were transferred exactly to the so there's a hard boundary here yes yeah. exactly so uh, the number of coins transferred to the side chain mm -hmm have to be greater than the number of greater or equal to the number of coins received by that specific side right. chain. Yeah. And that's that's really important. Okay? Absolutely. And so the risk here, uh, going back to security, mm -hmm. the risk, there is no risk, I mean, for the main chain. The right. only risk are the coins that are uh, sent in the side chain. Okay, so Alberto, this is a really good overview of how this distributed sidechain system could work, but what would be the next like real steps that say other developers who are interested in building in our ecosystem, what would they do? Okay, what we are doing right now. Yeah, okay. We are creating, a, let me say, an easy to use SDK mm -hmm. where all the complex logic of such payment tipos, certifiers, mm -hmm. and all the rules that are at the base of such yeah. sidechain system are already implemented. Right. Okay. So if you want to launch your own sidechain, mm -hmm. you will have to use such SDK with a set of APIs and uh, yeah. I mean uh, the whole um, framework yeah. by adding your specific logic mm -hmm. so your specific consensus and for example collection of the data and what to put in the block I mean uh, the, right. for example if you are talking we are talking about the treasury it would be votes uh, and, right. uh, and proposal and right. so on and, and so you will be focused on your specific application yep. rules okay and not all the other stuff that is necessary to um, make the system safe and to communicate with the main chain. Yep. Yeah, and that's great. And then what, what I can say is, particularly with our first set of side chains that we're creating, so we're, we're working on the treasury side chain. Yep. Also, the other really important side chain we, we haven't mentioned yet is migrating all of the, the secure node and super node tracking and payment logic onto its own side chain. Um, because right now we do this with server clusters around the world that, you know, it's still, we, we try to decentralize the clusters, but still they're servers, they're running off chain. So migrating this stuff onto its own sidechain solution, I think is a great next use case for sidechains. But through this process though, we're creating in a way reference sidechain models. So if you're a business and you want to kind of join our ecosystem, you don't necessarily have to start from scratch with a, a raw SDK. We could also have reference sidechains models that you can kind of take and then modify from there and yeah. use our SDK. Or if you're just a, a, an amazing developer team, you can just start with the SDK and build something unique. Yeah, you can use uh, one one of our uh, sidechain, first sidechain, uh, as an example, and you can right. take ideas from there. Yeah, yeah so it's a, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, and I, and I think from the business perspective, that's really important, is we don't want to just kind of throw technology out there and just let it sit. We want to actually go and facilitate people using it. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. But, yeah, no, thank you, Alberto. This was an excellent overview of the system. Thank you, Rob. The, the technical white paper that, that you guys put together, I think, was, was an excellent uh, like step deeper into the technology and kind of the, the logic flows, the, the you know kind of diagrams where you can see how, yeah, how the architecture is structured, and even getting into the mathematics of the, kind of the, the, the mathematical proofs that the security characteristics are actually valid. Yeah. I think it's really important. So this is an excellent um, project where you can buy into like, really good sound engineering architecture with uh, sound science and mathematical kind of proofs for validity. 
Um, so really, I, I think this takes the, the Horizon project to the next level that we've been, you know, has always been a core part of our vision and going beyond cryptocurrency. This is where we really get into the real world use cases that I'm really excited about. So thank you, Alberto, for giving the overview. Thank you, Rob. And thank you even more so for actually inventing this. That was, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be, I think, uh, a really, really important step in, in the right direction for the project. So yeah, thanks guys for joining. Thank you guys. And, Please, um, if, if you want any more information, come to the website, read the technical white paper, and of course, um, you know, sign up for all of our communication channels and be active members of the community. Thank you very much.